You know, people really just don't don't realize how dangerous this disease is. People need to educate themselves. It's like it, if you were walking in the jungle, then you would be on the lookout for tigers. If you're swimming in the ocean, you'd be looking out for sharks. And all I can say is if you're walking in the woods, you really should be looking out for ticks. Because they can ruin your whole life. One infected deer tick can change your life. They're there, hidden in the leaves, waiting to latch on. I've had Lyme disease for 21 years now. Yeah, I've known a lot of people with Lyme disease, including many members of my family. Very upsetting. I personally was bit by a deer tick before I became pregnant and then got pregnant and then for four months I was on bed rest. From what I understand, once it's in your system, you have it for life. My name is Thomas Mather and I'm a professor of entomology at the University of Rhode Island. We started a study to sample for ticks all over the state since 1993 in places where people had Lyme disease and in places where there didn't appear to be very many reports of Lyme disease. Tick densities are higher than they were 20 years ago. I was never very fond of bugs as a child, to be honest. I was a bit scared of them. I would tend to run from simple things like dragonflies that now I know are harmless. Okay. Well, I tell them that this is site 35-3 and they all write that down on their card and then they get their little vials out. I wanted to be involved in something that people cared about and people seemed to care about not getting sick. When I first came to Rhode Island, people were well aware that there were lots of ticks on Prudence Island. And people were starting to be aware in the early 90s that they were getting a disease called Lyme disease in southern Rhode Island. And what we found was ticks were far more abundant where people were getting Lyme disease and they were less abundant where people didn't get Lyme disease. In the United States, the earliest cases of Lyme disease were recognized in the Connecticut River Valley among mostly children that appeared to be suffering from juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. A very astute mother realized that there were clusters of these children coming down with symptoms that appeared to be like juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, and she knew that arthritis didn't occur in clusters. In the 1970s, Polly Murray and her family experienced severe and mysterious illnesses that her doctors could not explain. It was scary, very scary. I experienced some strange symptoms living here. At first we thought they were, you know, isolated to me, but then others in the family started getting the same kinds of symptoms. Strange rashes and fevers and headaches. And I started documenting all of these stories people started noticing that there was something very unusual happening. That there were kids waiting for the school bus uh, on crutches, and then I finally ended up going into Yale University and re reported all the cases that I had. And that was the beginning of the study of Lyme disease. Polly Murray alerted health officials, and after many months they confirmed her suspicions. The disease was not juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, but a disease transmitted by a striking red and black tick.
Since the 1970s, tick populations have expanded at an alarming rate. Ticks feed on white-tailed deer, mice, chipmunks, birds, and dogs. With Lyme disease, the symptom load is so diverse and overwhelming that you, it, it, there's reason why you, you feel like you're going crazy. You're just tired, exhausted. You know something is wrong, you know. The worst case that I've known about is my cousin who lives in Maryland where they don't have a lot of ticks and he was having um, all kinds of problems, aches and pains and weakness and, and then one day he woke up and he had Bell's palsy and it turned out that he had probably contracted Lyme disease about 10 years earlier. Most people that get Lyme disease start to feel fever and ache before any other symptoms. It can best be described as a summertime flu-like illness. Often the next symptom that people see is a red rash typically occurring at the site of the tick bite. Often it's an expanding rash that grows to bigger than a 50 cent piece. They sometimes have a bullseye look but more typically is a red raised area that expands over the course of a week or two weeks. Yeah, I know you get a, a big red blotch on your skin. And if you do, you go to the doctor and get an antibiotic and he tests you for Lyme disease. But you may not know that you've been bitten by a deer tick. If left untreated within a few days or weeks, you may experience loss of muscle tone in your face, commonly known as Bell's palsy severe joint pain and swelling, heart problems, or pain that moves from joint to joint. Within several months, you may experience intermittent bouts of arthritis, chronic neurological problems, or problems with concentration and short-term memory. It really, it really changed my life because I was, I used to be pretty, even though I, you know, I had things happening or got sick, I always was able to bounce back and I was a mom and I was a, a musician, I was a full-time musician, now I only play maybe two or three times a year. She has been struggling with Lyme disease and she has been limiting her performances so tonight's performance is a rare occasion for her and uh, we're glad to have her here. I was working full-time as an office manager and I can't do any kind of work like that. Now I, I can't work at all. Very sporadic times where I feel well and then other times where I don't feel well at all. It's the scary part of it is because it does mimic those kind of diseases that have a relapse and then you go into remission. So that was hard. 